no other landscape on earth feels so much like Pandora's box than the big ditch. And there is a lot you need to know to be prepared to hike here. It doesn't matter if you're on the busy, luxurious rim to rim corridor or out on the remote wilds of the Grand Canyon's true backcountry. There are a few extra essentials you want to carry no matter what. First, the sun is your enemy. You're always racing the clock regardless of where you are in the canyon. That's because for every 1,000 feet you drop in elevation in the Grand Canyon, it gets 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit hotter on average. And if you're wondering what that really means, there is anywhere between 5,000 to 6,000 plus feet in elevation from the rim that you start on to the canyon bottom, or an average of 27.5 to 33 degree temperature difference from the rim to the river. That's so substantial. I've got an awesome temperature reference in the show notes down below for you, so be sure to check it out. Not to mention, during the spring and summer months, there is a lot less shade on the south side of the canyon where most of the backpacking is because the sun is tracking higher in the sky. Now for the north rim, you're gonna get a lot more shade in the spring. However, it's usually largely inaccessible that time of year. There are a few things you can do to prepare for this onslaught of heat. First, Pack right. It doesn't matter where you're hiking, it's always a good idea to carry a sun umbrella. There are several lightweight options, think less than eight ounces, and you can easily attach them to your pack for hands-free hiking. See the pinned comment down below for my favorite sun umbrella that I always take with me in the canyon. Sun umbrellas can lower the temperature around you by up to 10 degrees, and they provide much coveted shade and a slight relief from the heat. Even the rangers carry them. The only time you may not need one is in the winter. Next, you wanna bring a lot of salt. This can be salt sticks, salty snacks, or electrolyte powders. Personally, I carry all of these, but the electrolytes do double duty. I'll give you my biggest secret about that later on in this video. Timing your day in the Grand Canyon is also absolutely essential. It is not uncommon to start your day by headlamp, especially if the inner canyon is your destination or you're running up against a hot day. Take a look at the map and plan your day around the shade. Read trip reports, get a handle on where you can find shade, and it's typical to sit under a shady spot from around 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. if you're further below the rim. Oftentimes you can make good progress, but a 3 a.m. alarm isn't out of the norm in the Grand Canyon, even in the shoulder seasons. If you can learn to live by the canyon's daily calendar, you're gonna have a much better and safer time out here. All of us hardened veterans love to go on about how the Grand Canyon miles just hit differently. I have backpacked all over the world and I have not found any place that even comes remotely close to describing what it's like to be off corridor here. So what does that actually mean? First, there is a huge difference between hiking the rim to rim corridor, that's North and South Kaibab trails and the Bright Angel Trail versus the rest of the canyon. Now, 95% of the visitors that dip below the rim stick to these three trails. The rim to rim corridor is like a super highway. The trail is well-maintained and marked. It isn't that steep comparatively, and there's a water line, so you don't need to worry too much about water management. There are also a ton of people. There is even a hotel down there. So there is a lot of infrastructure to support the hiking, and it really is a lot like hiking light. Not to say it's not difficult, it is, but anything off of the corridor is much, much different. Think extremely rugged terrain, unmaintained, faint trails, steep drops along ledge systems less than 18 inches wide, vast distances between unreliable water sources, oh, and virtually no people, so you need to be self-reliant. Take your normal hiking speed and chuck it out the window. It will take longer no matter what. Maps don't pick up a lot of the tedious micro-terrain, scrambling, and even straight up cliffs in the canyon. That was fucking terrible. So tone your mileage down. 14 miles in the Grand Canyon is absolutely more challenging than 14 miles in the Rockies. Ask me how I know. Trip reports and the Backcountry Information Office offer a wealth of info to help you plan your trip. It is an understatement to say that the Grand Canyon is an unforgiving place. It's 
almost a time warp and big mile days are serious undertakings. Your mountain hiking or long distance ability at home can be really helpful. But at the end of the day, there is nowhere else on earth where you're faced with so many different obstacles that can put you in a dangerous situation very quickly. First up, you really have to know how to read the terrain. It's always a good idea to be comfortable with exposure and route finding in the Grand Canyon. Sometimes a trail is just a subtle depression or slight change in rock color along a vast plateau that no one has walked over for months. I love you, Tonto Trail. Like I've said before, GPS maps miss a lot in this canyon, so the more you read, the better prepared you can be. And trust me, you're still gonna be in for a surprise. Just take a quick listen to my campsite along the rural arch route. <laughs> Gosh. Many of the trails look flat, but there can be large boulders, scrambling, and plenty of micro terrain to contend with that will slow you down. Maps and even a compass can be useless out here, thanks to large iron deposits in the rock. If you can't navigate by understanding the terrain you're moving through, then level up your skill set first before heading off corridor. Now for the most obvious skill set of mastering the Grand Canyon water management. This essential desert backpacking skill is even more prudent in the Grand Canyon, and here is why. There are a shocking number of undrinkable water sources throughout the canyon, from brackish seeps to radioactive, yes, you heard that right, water sources, this place is truly like another planet. Doing your homework is absolutely essential when you're planning your route. Get your hands on all the trip reports you can find, join Facebook groups, I've got a great one in the show notes for you, read one pagers the National Park Service puts out, and always contact the backcountry office in the days leading up to your trip for updates on status regarding the water. Plan your water out and carry more than you need for that unexpected adventure you're likely to have. If you wanna backpack off the main corridor in the Grand Canyon, you must be comfortable doing the following, caching water. For certain routes, you can cache your water and you can leave a few liters on the way up for you to pick up again. Just be sure to label your cache with the dates. I always like to use a date that is about two days past when I expect to be out of the canyon. So if something happens, nobody's gonna rob my cache. And it should go without saying, but don't do that. Hauling water. Remember that one liter of water weighs just over two pounds and that really does add up. It is not unreasonable to need to haul 10 liters of water for an overnight stint where there is no no water. Sourcing water. This isn't as simple as it sounds. Remember when I was talking about those misleading topo maps? A half mile detour off a trail down a wash to reach a water source can easily take you half a day. So you need to be sure you're managing your time. And lastly, if you're sourcing water from the river, it gets silty. So silty, in fact, that a lot of your standard mainstream water filters are going to clog up and leave you in a bit of a bind. You always wanna bring a backup source. And here's where my electrolytes come in. The water from the river and some of the springs really doesn't taste that great. And if you're filtering from a pothole, it's going to be even nastier. So those electrolytes can dampen down some of the taste of grit and pond scum that may be in your Grand Canyon water. There are a few secret solutions to demudifying the Colorado River. I'll give you the inside scoop in my next video where I talk about what I bring with me on every Grand Canyon backpacking trip.